himself laughing as cousin pays homeless people to do push-ups. It's not very um, brotherly. That's not very nice. I think all these controversies, everybody forgets how much the 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 core audience of the person plays into it. You know, I would think if um, if Adam Levine was filmed doing this, it would have far more drastic repercussions for his career than a UFC fighter. Man, I would like Adam Levine for some weird reason if he did that. I mean, is he helping these people get fit, or is he kind of... I don't see how you could go up to a vagrant on the street and be like, give me 20, and then give him a couple dollars and walk away and make the argument that you'd taken a sincere interest in their physical well-being. Okay, good point. Well, I I'd mean, he, it did, up. he didn't kick him or anything. No. But yeah, you're right, it's not cool, right? It's not cool. It's not cool. But it's, I mean, the dude hangs out with yeah. mafia people and shit, it's man. Like, cool. what are we, what are we doing here? Like, nobody's, nobody's nice. These guys can't control themselves. They're like, hey, Dana White, you stopped me from killing man. I see his face. We kill, run, kill. Just do now. I kill. Why not kill now? Why not give me kill now? Give him to me. I yeah. kill. And then the other guy, fucking Dolly, throwing. You know what I mean? These people are fucking out of control. People. This, you know what I mean? We gotta. Just kick back and, and enjoy, but uh, these people are fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy criminals. Yeah, there's levels of uncool, which is something that the internet has completely forgotten. That's the level of uncool where you go, not cool, dude. And that's the end of it. Yeah. That's not cool, dude. Yeah, yeah people no don't... bump fights, but... Yeah, that was a bad... That was bad. That was worse. That was yep. worse. If he was yeah. organizing bump fights, I would probably take more drastic measures than telling him it was uncool. Speaking of bump... <laughs> speaking of bump fights, Alice Mania 15... <laughs> I've organized that. That's going to be happening. I don't know if there's too many bumps. Somebody was nice enough to hit back uh, my staff and say that he's 185 pounds. And are you sure that he's okay to be in the lightweight musical chair fight? And I was, and I was like, man, that's pretty big claim. Send me the video again so that I can watch the video. And I was like, wow. That's amazing. That uh, He was worried that he, you know, he might be in the wrong class, in the, in the wrong weight class. But I think that... Uh, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but remember, everybody, Brock Lobster is in both both classes, and he is on steroids, and you are allowed to be on steroids at Alice Mania, so there's no, there's no sanction, you know what I mean, there's no, he can do it. I'm would not you, checking for it. Would you consider at least, like, shooting up with some pain stuff before you fight? Hell yeah. Like, no. what, heroin? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Heroin in the calf. You know, like when they gave Terrell Owens to play, to play in the Wait, Super Bowl with yeah. like a broken arm? Oh, you mean uh, fucking cortisone? Bike? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I already talked to my trainer about cortisone yeah, shot today. Uh, but, I, but my plan is to make the thing go away. Yeah, I know, but failing that. If it doesn't work, yeah, I'll get a, I'll get a cortisone shot. Yeah, Man, it's that. Carl Kingsbury! <laughs> Watch video of that guy! Are you not allowed to do that shot in the UFC or anything? The cortisone? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, hey, that's a good question. Can you get a cortisone shot before you fight in the UFC? I've never heard anybody bring it up. I know in other, like in the NFL, it's it's open knowledge. Yeah, they have it up standing by, right? Yeah. Yeah, good question. I feel like if it's like a blanket policy where like everybody can, if you got a fucked up foot or something. I'd say I'd say no, just because of the their the whatever USADA the so strict. Yeah, it seems like it anyway. Right, you would have to not tell. Yeah, if you got it and didn't tell somebody, but if you uh, if you said, "Hey, it hurts so bad, I need a cortisone shot," you're out. They have to pull you. Oh yeah, right. But apparently, the NFL is not like that, or at least it hasn't been. I don't follow football very closely anymore, but for years and years, it was kind of understood that when people make miraculous comebacks, it's steroids or cortisone. Yeah. And people love I've those comebacks. Nobody, nobody asks. You know, when some guy is like, "Oh, he should be done for three years," and they're like, "No, he's coming back for the playoffs." Like nobody really asks I've, a lot of questions. I've had cortisone shot. It's not that much of a miracle, right? Like you still got to have like incredible will to just fight through the pain. I believe it. Like, like how powerful is it? Like if I if I got a paper cut and took a little cortisone <laughs> shot, would that help? This guy's amazing. Now, can you give me another analogy that involves actual pain? All right, say I kicked my couch and got gout from it. <laughs> I don't know what to... Give me, give me your athlete injury. I don't understand what gout is. <laughs> is that... What is that? A toe infection or something? You got carpal tunnel. Yeah, dude. You can help me. Give me a fucking athlete injury and I'll tell you what... If what the pain um, level. If someone punched you in the nuts? Nope. That's going to go away. Wow. He's like three... Three and up. Come on. <laughs> uh, a broken finger? Okay. There you go. If you broke your finger and I got... Because uh, you broke it right now. Like you snapped it, right? Yeah, yeah. 
that would hurt a lot. Yep. That's going to stay, but then the next day, because it's going to be fucking sore the next day, if you got a cortisone shot, it would numb it. But if I fucking, if I flicked your finger or you did it on something, you would <laughs> for sure feel it. Okay. Yeah. Right. See, that's the thing that always got me. Painkillers never worked. Like, painkillers in skateboarding, just, they made me too slow. Like, you can't do a painkiller and think you're going to get lucky. You're just going to fucking get shit. It's kind of like being drunk, really. Yeah, they're very disorienting. Whatever pain, uh, you know, alleviation they offer, I feel like would be offset by the fact that you're doped up. You know, the other thing I realized... uh, I always, especially when I fought those 10 guys in Uriah, I gassed out so hard and I was kind of like, man, I always gas out in Vegas. What is that? You know what I mean? Sometimes I actually train and then I realize that usually Death, Death, Die or Tain Stick or Tiger Box is the night before and I'm nervous and not really wanting to sing, so I'll have a drink before I sing. And if you have one drink, the next day you have half the cardio. And I never really thought about that. And then I remember like a long time ago where I was hungover and then I drank shots before I fought Kit. Before I fought him. I think actually that was actually a good idea. A little hair of the dog. I just don't think that I was going to get it. You know what I mean? I don't think I was going to catch him. He's real good. I'm not. Yeah, I might wonder, as well take the edge off the hangover with a shot. I wonder if there's any there's age couple. where... <laughs> That's less... I don't want to say that's good, but that's, like, less bad. Like, if you're, like, a 21-year-old alcoholic frat bro and you drink a quarter of a bottle of whiskey... Yeah. I think you can kind of go box and you're sort of about as good as you were going to be. Uh... Yeah. No, I don't think you would notice it unless you're an athlete that trained for it. Unless you had to get into the championship rounds. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know what I mean? Because I feel like if you don't know how to box... Then you're gonna get tired no matter what you did. Yeah. So if you've boxed a little bit and drank the day before, then you'll notice it. But if you've never boxed, you don't know. You're just like, fuck, man. You get tired when you punch people. You don't. It doesn't add up, you know. But when you do the work and you're like, okay, I'm ready to do this amount of, amount of rounds, and then you fight for one round, you're like, why am I so tired? And there it is. So. Mental note: I won't be doing that again. What happens if you take a cortisone shot and nothing hurts? Wait, you mean like so when he's punching you, you don't feel it? Yeah. I don't know if punches to the face really hurt. I mean, I guess when your nose gets broken, it hurts. But sometimes it's more like, <laughs> you kind of, bless you, you kind of get, you know what I mean, mesmerized a little bit. You kind of, you don't, it's not a pain thing. It's more of a, what's going on? You know? It's almost like your body, you see some guys who get really clean, knocked out sometimes, it's like their their body quits before the pain registers. Yeah. Like, they look kind of surprised that they are... Uh, they're like, wow, that hurt, but I'm going to keep boxing. And your legs are like, no, you're not. That indicates to me that it's 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 your your body shuts down before you actually feel the full brunt of the blow. Yeah, you're kind of lucky, really. I'm sure you feel it later. But... Sometimes you don't. Sometimes I got punched in the face and I'm like, ah! Some people have that talent. Where they punch you and it's like, ah, man, why does that hurt so much? You know? Different people's hands punch you in the face, make it feel different. Yeah, it usually hurts when I get punched in the face. Yeah, because you analyze, I could see you analyzing it. But we have a guest! Jason. How's it going, mate? What's up? How are you? What's up? Fellas. Here he is. Jerry O'Connell, welcome. Are we, like, doing it? Yeah, this is... Anyway, you, you don't want to do happening. it? Let's do it. I just... First of all, I had no idea that you were in Los Angeles. Who's... What? Us? Yeah, I just we're, thought everybody was in New York. Oh. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a subscriber. I listen very often. You're a massive often. Stern fan. I know that, because I've heard you on Stern a bunch of times. I am a Stern fan. I've heard you on Stern. You are amazing. All right. And it's how so I was... Um, it's how I was first introduced to you. Oh, okay. And Wait, um, have you heard this show? Of course. Oh, okay, cool. Listen, I, I love I love my stern, but you know it's not on a lot of the time. You know, I mean three and, days, and um, 
you guys are on a lot of the time. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, I well, think there's room to be fans of everyone here in the series. Why can't we all get along, band. right? We don't yeah. want to <laughs> brag, but we do a show five days a week. Yeah. No, you absolutely do. <laughs> I really like him. Of course. Yeah. Y- you should. He he really likes you. He made me. Um, well, I, some would argue you made yourself. Well, you know, I mean, what I mean? you know what I mean? He inspired me to want to do this job. Well, yeah, but you are also... He, different. he didn't make me. He didn't, he didn't help me at all, but, but, he, but he's the reason that I would want to do it. Yeah, but you're a different uh, entity. I mean, yeah, yeah, a... yeah. I didn't mean it like you know what I mean. I was trying to give credit to the because that's the guy. That I was like, oh, radio, yeah, Stern. It wasn't even radio. It was how you could have just called it Howard Sterny because right. that's what it looked like. That sport was we've called him. But you are a little different in the sense that you're like of a skateboarding generation, of an mm. MMA generation. You're. Do you skateboard? I don't skateboard well. Did you did though? I did in the 1980s. It, what kind of sessions did you get up to? Did, like, uh, um, it was right. Like, I think like uh, tricks and ollies and all that stuff yeah. were just starting. It was Would, more like. Did a, you get airborne? Uh, I got a, a little bit airborne. Fuck I was, yeah! I was a little what bit. What kind of airborne's were you doing? I mean, I think ollies were about as big as it got back on the then. ground. Did you ollie up a curb? I, I ollied up a curb, but I'm significantly older than you, so this was. Wait, like, you are. Yes. That's bullshit then. What are you on? Because I want it. Um, I'm. Uh, you look I, the same age as me. You might even look younger than me. I uh, I have a doctor here. You want me to give you his yes. name? And he injects me with everything. I fucking super will do that. I'm on a lot of stuff that I inject myself, but I need a doctor to do it. I didn't mean heroin or anything. I meant like, you know, enhancing shit. No, of course, shit. of course. Um, I meant like Botox and stuff. I didn't mean See, I don't do that because I things. keep getting sucked in the face and I'm not done with that. And I've also, because I thought my nose is fucked and right. I can't breathe through one hole, the deviated septum thing. Sure. But I don't want to get a, a deviated septum surgery and then my friend punch me in the nose and breaks it again. I'll feel like an idiot. I am looking 